It's day two of the Tampa Collectors Con, and today I brought my crew. We're gonna hit the card show floor and try to find ourselves some big trade deals. Do this. This episode of Sports Card Investor is brought to you by eBay eBay is here for the card collectors with a trick for every trade. Like advanced tools for price checking with the price guide beta within the eBay app and up to 50% faster listing with image scan. Learn how collecting just got smarter at ebay.com forward slash trading hub. Bro, we're about to make so much money with this. You're not going to make money on that. Why are you opening that? So don't open kidding. your You're wax. Just like my brother, Keep bro. your wax seal. You don't make money on that. Bro, That's bro, a waste bro. now. You just destroy bro. that. No, you're not, gonna, you're not making money on mosaic. What? Silver. Donovan all right. Mitchell. All right. Bradley Beal. All right, bro, you literally have nothing. 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 Yeah. Anthony Edwards. Hey, that's all right. Oh, all right. You guys, good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's good. Good job, guys. So I'm sitting here looking at that Mbappe card because the Mbappe market is really down compared to where it was earlier this year. But with the World Cup coming next year, with him headlining the French national team, I think there's opportunity for that card to rise a lot in 2022. All right, Huey, so I'm interested in the Mbappe card. You've got it listed at 2,000, which would have been a fair price a few months ago. Unfortunately, the market on those cards has come down recently, as, have, as has a lot of modern cards recently. It looks like there's been a couple of sales of that card at auction in November, they were selling for around 1300 Okay. So, it's a pretty low population card, which is something that I like about it. Only 111 of those. So you don't see it all that, all that often. Um, but it's uh, obviously, you know, I'd have difficulty paying more than, you know, recent comps on it. I'd be willing to do 1300 on it, which is right where they've sold for recently. Uh, probably, you know, I think that's probably fair market value. Obviously, then you wouldn't, get fees for you know for, right. for doing it online so i'd be Understood. willing to do 1300 cash if you'd be willing to do that that that's pretty fair offer cash offer over the table that's all can't beat that okay yeah. you're willing to do it yeah, thank yes, you sir. awesome yeah absolutely very thank nice you. to meet you yeah nice to meet you too got the card i like it it's one i'm excited about that i think is going to go up hopefully next year very nice wow that's a huge card thank you very much yeah. what's your name Jackson, nice to meet you, Jackson. So some of our team here at Sports Card Investor travel down to this Tampa card show as well. And Parker, Hammer, what's up, guys? You guys are exhibiting here. You got a table. Mm -hmm. What's 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 this show been like so far, Parker? Well, it's been great for me selling UFC cards so far. I already made two deals. Just made a deal for all three of these cards. There's been a lot of interest. Um, so yeah, it's been a great show for me so far. Awesome. And Hammer, what do you got going on? What are you trying to sell here? I've got a, I've got a lot of different stuff going on here. I got some basketball, I've got some baseball, and I've even got some marble cards. I've had a ton of people coming asking about the marble cards and asking about sports card investor in general and market movers and what we're doing with our products. So I will say the show has been actually just overwhelming with positivity. Awesome. Well, good luck, guys. Thanks. Hope you do well for the rest of the show. So I was just walking around the card show floor and Dan here came up to me, actually his son did specifically, to show me this incredible LeBron James card. This is second year 2004, Exquisite, which is the brand everybody lusts after, auto patches with an on-card auto from LeBron. I just made Dan a 20K cash offer for this card. He's thinking about it. I'm not sure he's gonna take it, but you know, even, even being able to see something like this and hold this for a minute is an incredible experience. It's one of the really cool things about coming to card shows. You never know what you're gonna find with even just people walking around with their briefcases on the show floor. Okay. How you doing? Good. Good. So I just noticed this case on the show floor that Money Mitch Cards has here. A lot of Zion. Zion right now, man, it seems like a risk, right? There, there's a lot of questions about whether this guy's in shape or not, whether his body is gonna hold up after he's been battling some pretty serious injuries. But at the same time, his market is way down. His prices have cratered. So it would be a speculative bet, but it might be a good time to pick up some Zion right now if I'm willing to take the chance. I'm gonna work with Mitch and we'll see if we can maybe get either a trade or maybe a cash deal done. I'm willing to take a little bit of a risk right now on Zion. So this is the cheapest one? 
uh, that we have. This is the True Red, number to 299. This one runs about 4,500 uh, or so in a 9.5. This is the True Blue, number to 199. Uh, in a 9.5, the last two comps are around 10K and 12K. Uh, BGS 10, uh, low pop uh, on this. There hasn't been any comps on that. Um, and then the Purple Ice is numbered to 149, a PSA 10. This is a super hard one to get in a, in a 10. There's only pop four. Uh, I, I value it around 12 to 14,000. And then the Blue Ice, which is numbered to 99, uh, PSA 9, I think the last comp was around $8,000 on that one. So I've got the Lamello Kaboom. Recent sales of this have been a little over 11000 And then the Refractor LeBron, which is somewhere probably in the low 40s right now, low to mid $40,000 range based upon recent sales of that card. Was there a, was there a particular card or, or couple in here that you were more interested in than not? Uh, I'm not a huge Lamello fan, but mm -hmm. I just know a lot of people are Lamello fans, so I'd yeah. be potentially interested in the, the Lamello. The Kaboom market's been nuts. I don't think I've ever had a Kaboom, so I'd be potentially interested in, in that too. I don't think I would be interested in anything else okay. trade-wise. Okay. Depending on what you would be looking at, I would, I'd be interested potentially on a trade or trade plus cash or vice versa, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes sense. Yeah, and like on the true blue, this is the only thing that I don't like. So the PWCC monthly auction, mm -hmm. there's so many people that aren't on there. Right. Like half, like, so I, I take those into consideration, but I don't take them into consideration as much on comps because if 30 or 50% of the market either doesn't know about it or isn't registered or isn't verified to be able to buy on there, like that takes out. Because there's, there's a couple cards that I wanted to buy that I've seen that went for pretty low that right. I would have bought, but I wasn't, I, I didn't right. sign up for it. I didn't was that a 9.5? Yeah, this was, that was that same 9.5. I mean, that, that to me doesn't seem out of line with just how yeah. the Zion market in general has, I mean, you know, as you said, these types of cards yeah. have dropped in half. Yeah. So to me, that is kind of expected for but a little bit of We also saw it, the reason why I say that is because I also saw it with other cards too. I didn't just do the Zion market with other, if you take Kevin Durant, or if you take Steph Curry, or what, not, they're not really, not much Steph Curry's on there, but if you take other players and put them on PWCC and match them up, PWCC, a lot of the monthly has been lower than what eBay has been or what other ones have been. That's kind of why. Fair. I think it's a little bit lower, but I don't think it's that much lower. So yeah, I mean, Zion's Prism yeah, Silver those are, since September. Those have dropped, yes. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're almost, almost, not quite half, but almost half. Four halves on it. Right. Well, we each have one, but we have to agree, you know, to sell either one. He either keeps the one himself or we keep half and half, kind of. So I like, I like the, I like the pristine Zion. I feel like it's a huge risk. I'm scared of it. <laughs> The refractor, obviously, the LeBron, you know, carries a lot more stability. I'd have to get, I'd have to get more than just that, especially with the risk. I feel like I'd be taking on it. I would. So here would be my offer. I would offer you the. I'd offer you the LeBron. For the for these two. Oh, Steph Curry ten. Zion Pristine ten. For the LeBron. 9.5 refractor. I'd probably have to pass on that. I think there's just too much upside with the with the Zion. That's the reason why I got it. I just I already have a LeBron Prime right. Refractor, a 9.5 as well, with a with a 10 subgrade in it as well. So. So what would you So what would you do? Because I feel like I couldn't. I I, I can't. I, I couldn't do this straight up. Yeah. I couldn't do it straight up. Yeah. I'd be willing to do and I, this. I honestly. To be honest, I don't even know if I. I don't you don't even know, know if you do a straight up. Yeah. More confident in that one going back up because he's not even playing and his prices are at this price. LeBron's won how many championships and has a superstar team right now. Yeah, but this is. I mean, this is boom or bust to the highest it, degree in it, my opinion. It is. It like if, it if, he, if is. he comes out and and doesn't look great and then yeah. and he gets re-injured, like it de it this is. will this will happen. Like. Def Overnight, hundred percent. You know, so that's the thing. This is not going to happen it, overnight. A player like him doesn't come around very often. Mm -hmm. uh, being that naturally gifted and, and that size, so that's mm -hmm. kind of why being bigger, stronger, and faster than LeBron was at, at twenty years old, higher shooting percentage, higher points per game at that at that age. Obviously, yes, there is some some uh, negative effects with weight or with injuries but I mean that could happen with anybody too so and where where were you at on those two um, so the last comps 13 right and you just can't find which them. just which just popped up just they were they were they were at like nine 
They were like 12. The last one was 10, 12, 12. And then all of a sudden it kind of shot up. Obviously, he's on the back of a three point record right now. So Cash like, offer, I'd probably be 12, 5. Okay. You know, like, and then how about on the Durants? The Durants, I'd probably be at like 10K on those. That's, that's about where they are. And where were you at on that one? 4,500. Would you consider? Would you consider that? I think that's pretty fair if you add up all the numbers. Even if you can bring this down into the mid 30s, and I and it still adds up to you know what you were just talking about. He's looking to trade, you know, this for that. And I just I don't know if I would want to do that. All right, so this is an intense trade negotiation taking place here. Mitch and I have gone back and forth a lot. He's still over here checking comps. My, my thing is, I have no idea at this point if something's going to get done or not. I'm hopeful it will, but we'll we'll see how this plays out. Do you mind if I just call my buddy really quick and just see what uh, what he kind of thinks about this? Maybe yeah, can, please. Cool. No pressure. I'll just give him a call. Give me like five minutes. Okay. You got a picture? So I just met Anthony on the show floor. He's got a crazy story. It's amazing. Anthony, tell us that story again. So I went onto YouTube and I found your channel and I was like, okay, let's watch the Miami card show. Let's see what this is like. And I fell in love with the hobby. So I quit my job like the next week and I got right into cards. And, you're, uh, very, you're very decisive. You, follow, you watch a YouTube video, you fall in love with it and you say, man, I am taking the chance. That's crazy, that's awesome. All right, so I got off the phone with him. I wanted to ask him too about about this, just okay. kind of see where where he felt the pristine, tent. yes, yeah, yeah. value wise and stuff like that. And we, and we kind of talked about this too, value wise, where he would be uh, on on the refractor. He feels the same as I do on the refractor, value wise. Just PSA nine also just went for twenty four k, one point five, and that's about thirty six thousand. The BGS nine came down a little bit; it came down about twenty percent. So if we go off the last comp of 44K, 20% of that is 36,000. Okay. So it kind of lines up to me. So you're at 36 like, on that I, card. I value this card at 36K. That, that's kind of okay. where I think that the value is okay. right, right now, true value-wise on, on that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think this is uh, a, bad, a bad deal. I think that's a value is, is right there, to be right. honest, trade-wise. And then he also <laughs> said that he would, this is what I was worried about, he would do this as well. So he'd do, he'd do that straight up. He would do that straight up. He'd do that straight up. He would do that straight up. Or I, I would do this. You would do that? I would do this, yeah. Okay. So you, I, you can pick kind of either one. There's two different ways to look at this, okay? So one is that you should buy, you should trade for the more rare, more exclusive, pristine 10. You're probably never gonna see that card again. You know, some would advise to go with the absolute most rare, most key card possible to get the most value. That's normally good advice. The challenge is that if you put all of your money into one particular card, in this case Zion, that is a big risk. This may not have quite as much upside if Zion comes out and does really well, but it also limits the downside that I might potentially face. I'm taking a risk on a couple of Zion cards, hoping that his market comes back to life, but then I've also got a couple of GOAT type cards as well, which should have long-term price stability. Trading a GOAT card like the LeBron Refractor, I feel better about trading it for some GOAT and some risk with high upside than all risk with high upside. So this is the trade deal that I'd like to do. Perfect. Awesome. Mitch, we pleasure. got a deal done. Absolutely. That's great, That's man. Great. This was a good negotiation, Absolutely. a lot of back and forth. Absolutely. But that was a lot of fun. Cool. Awesome. You're a great dealer. Tell everybody how they can find you. Yeah, well, on uh, Instagram, underscore, Money Mitch Cards, underscore. Um, I do have a YouTube channel as well that we just started uh, filming a couple couple YouTube channel or a couple YouTube videos. So um, you can check us out on that too. Awesome. We will put those on the screen. Cool. Woo! We got the deal done, ladies and gentlemen. That was an intense trade. Yeah. Awesome, man. It's fun. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yes. Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson. Zion has experienced persistent soreness in his fractured foot. It's unclear when he will return to the court at this point. And Zion. Okay, I need to add a little more context to the trade that you just saw. That trade took place hours prior to the news breaking that Zion had suffered a setback in his return to the court and that his injury continues. Literally hours after I did that trade, I got the alert on my phone about the news of Zion's injury continuing. And I was like, oh no. Like what horrible timing, unfortunately, because that probably means Zion's card prices are gonna continue to fall in the weeks ahead instead of rise 
as I was hoping that they would with him actually getting to return to the court. But look, that's part of the danger of trading or investing in young speculative players. Players who haven't yet been proven, players who haven't yet won rings on the court. When you invest in those types of players like Zion, you take the chance that injuries or other factors can derail their career and they may never fulfill their potential, which is going to knock their card prices down over the long run. I was comfortable with the risk, but I sure would have been happier with the trade in retrospect had he actually been able to return to the court as planned. I'm still gonna hold those two Zion cards. I'm still gonna hope that either later this season or maybe next season, he does make a return to the court and he does return to form. I really liked the trade when I did it because both of those Zion cards, they were graded BGS 9.5. I felt like both of them were in really nice condition. The centering was why they got knocked down and grade a little bit. And PSA doesn't weigh centering as heavily in their grading. They allow you to have a little bit more flexibility with centering. So my thought is, I'm gonna take both of those Zion cards and try to cross them over to PSA, see if I can get a PSA 10 out of either of them, which would enhance the value of those cards considerably. And I still got Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. I'm really, really happy with both of those. It's possible that you could see Steph Curry versus Kevin Durant in the NBA Finals this year. I liked getting out of a little bit of LeBron. The Lakers are somewhat struggling. I'm not sure LeBron's gonna have a chance at another ring this year. And moving some of that investment into KD and into Steph Curry, who are on hot teams right now, teams that have a chance at getting to the title this year. If that happens, it would enhance their card prices. So overall, I'm still happy with the trade, even though I'm definitely now more nervous about the Zion news. What do you think about the trade? Would you have done it or do you think I am nuts? Let me know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon if you haven't already so we can continue to bring you shows like this. And subscribe to the Card Kids channel on YouTube so you can get more great coverage of my son's adventures at the Card Show, their vlog from their perspective. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back again soon with our next episode. Take care.